Welcome to Stribblings, New York. I'm your host, Rob Taub, on WOR AM Radio 710 on your digital dial. Stribblings, New York is a show about business, culture, and people with a wide range of guests from authors, producers, actors, artists, restaurateurs, famous athletes, as well as people from the world of real estate who will help you buy, sell, rent a home or apartment, and most importantly, if you're buying, getting a mortgage. So today, among our many guests, is the world's greatest mortgage expert, Melissa Cohn. Welcome, Melissa. She's on the phone. Thanks so much, Rob. Great to talk to you. So I understand we're going to talk about Brexit, which most people don't know very much about it. Tony and I certainly don't. Tony, our, our Simone, our producer, is joining us in the studio. I know a little bit about it. I thought it was a new, cheaper champagne, like Frix- <laughs> Frixinet. <laughs> Brexit, but it's called Brexit. Um, basically, what the Brexit is is that uh, the UK has been pondering the conception of leaving the EU um, and becoming independent from the EU, uh, which has a lot of ramifications for the entire European community. Uh, by leaving the EU, that means that the UK is showing lack of confidence in what Europe is doing in terms of structural changes and. and trying to promote economic growth as opposed to the basically stalled economy that is, you know, throughout Europe. Um, the ramifications of the Brexit are significant. Uh, up until two weeks ago, the poll showed that most people favored staying in the UK and people weren't concerned with the ramifications. As of the past week or so, the polls are showing that more people are getting out of the EU versus staying in. And there are tremendous anxieties about the global fallout that can happen from this thing, including a sell-off in global equities. Um, And also it will have a huge impact on currencies. They're talking about the British pound dropping by anywhere from 10 to 15 percent that day, uh, stocks falling 10 to 20 percent, and then having ramifications throughout Europe and elsewhere uh, as we – they basically vote on the fact that the EU is not doing its job in promoting uh, economic growth throughout that region. So I'm I'm noticing a big change right now, unless it's just me and my paranoia and anxiety, which is, is kind of typical for me. In New York, specifically with certain banks being much tougher on loans, is that something you've seen changing in the last couple of months? Because we haven't spoken in a while. Um, yeah, the answer to that is really no. The underwriting guidelines haven't changed. It may be that the people that we are seeing are buying today, and I have seen this, are pushing a little bit harder than they have over the course of the past few years, wanting to take more financing, um, having variable income. And it's just that the people that are – some people that are purchasing and trying to finance today are just not as well qualified as others. Well, do you think – oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, and I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that interest rates have, be, have really been dropping. The 10-year Treasury today is down at a 159, and that's the lowest level that we've seen in three and a half years. Mortgage rates have dropped, you know, about a quarter of a percent, and obviously with lower interest rates, that brings more buyers and more interest into the marketplace. And you know, it, it, it's just sort of it, it happens that that means that there are, there are more buyers, but not everyone is as well qualified as perhaps they used to be a year or two ago when interest rates were slightly higher um, and, you know, there were more people that were sort of holding back. So what do you see for the future? What's, what's going to change in New York real estate based on what's happening in Europe? Well, I think that what's happening in Europe is suggesting that there is a global slowdown in the economy, not just in Europe, in Asia and elsewhere. And the question is, is our economy slowing as well? Obviously, we're no longer in that 3% growth that we as a country have experienced for decades prior to, say, the past seven years. And are we now experiencing what we call the new normal, meaning that growth is slower, that inflationary pressures are lower. What was growth last? Was it 1% last last quarter? Which was what? The uh, The GDP? Yes. GDP was, I think, was, I think that they revised it to about 1%. But if you think about it, the normal GDP growth rate should really be over 3%, and we have in the past few years experienced basically a 2% growth rate. You know, that's a third 
percentage slowdown in the economy. And we've also seen that jobs, which really drive the economy because 70% of our economy is consumer-based, um, that the job markets are have been stronger, look like they're weaker today, but they're still once again well below the you know used to be average of three hundred thousand new jobs or more a month. So what happens to Midtown Manhattan right now? When I I was strolling uptown last night, the weather was so nice. I I decided to trudge home and walked about forty blocks and was looking at a lot of the new buildings and new developments and thinking about. Even if, if a lot of these places are bought and paid for by foreign buyers and they're not used as much because of a, a weaker European economy and they're not coming over here, then what happens to consumerism in New York and does that affect it and is that going to affect the prices of these humongous developments? Well, you know, that's a very interesting point. Um, for a long time, the dollar was very strong and that slowed down the foreign buyer because buying in the U.S. is more expensive. Right now, the yen is much stronger than it's been in a long time, and that actually would bring the Japanese buyers back into the marketplace because all of a sudden New York becomes a cheaper place to buy. Um, and we've also seen that with the euro. The euro is down, you know, it, it's up at like, I don't know, a dollar twelve, a dollar thirteen versus where it used to be at a dollar five. So the fact that our dollar is weaker, I think, will actually help and promote uh, you know, purchasing in real estate in New York City, because while our economy is not where we want it to be, it's certainly much stronger than other economies throughout the world. So then I, I shouldn't be wringing my hands as much as I have been. I keep turning, I keep turning the air conditioning on more here in the studio because I'm getting nervous whenever I talk money. I you know you can't. Obviously, we don't know what's going to happen. The Fed is going to announce what they're going to do uh, shortly. Uh, likely that nothing's going to happen until July, but everyone wants to know, is the Fed going to raise once or twice more this year? Uh, Japan is going to report their monetary policy, and on the 23rd, we have the Brexit vote. That Brexit vote seems to be the most important uh, issue in the world today, with even stronger economic data at home being overlooked by the fact that the Brexit could create incredible turmoil in our marketplace. So, but from from what I know, which is little, is that it's going to happen, though. No, that's not oh, necessarily okay. true. That's what I, I mean, keep hearing on Twitter. So, so well, no. Th first of all, if you want to find, you can find as many articles saying that people are going to e not exit versus exit. The polls do show that the people who want to exit have a seven percent lead. But I mean, look at some of our uh, polls and votes. You know, throughout the. Uh, presidential primaries. You know, polls don't necessarily tell the truth anymore. And most of the polls that are, have been taken are with, you know, less than 3,000 people. That's really hard to be representative of what's going on in the entire United Kingdom. Okay, you made me feel better. And Melissa, you always have a calm, sensible voice that you bring to Stribling's New York. And I mean, just remember, life will go on. People get married, people get divorced, they have children. <laughs> There's always a need for real estate. Okay, I, I, I like you on the real estate. I'm not getting married or divorced or having another kid. <laughs> not not this month. But uh, well, I, well, maybe next reason. month, so then you can buy. <laughs> Melissa, it's always great to have you on the show. Next time, don't call in. Try and come visit us. And we'll we'll chat for a long time. I would like that. Okay, so you, uh, let me just remind our our listeners to any mortgage questions. Well, it has to be an important one because you can call Melissa directly at two one two two three one. 7301 at MC Home Loans. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks so much.